Okay, thank you. Okay, again, I'll call to order the special meeting of the City Council performing the housing functions of the former Victorville Redevelopment Agency of the City of Victorville. Uh, this is not a normal meeting, and before we get into our public comment, um, uh, we won't necessarily have an invocation pledge of allegiance, but I would ask uh, everyone on the dais uh, to please stand along with those in the audience. Um, yesterday, uh, we lost one of our own here in the city. Uh, John Tissell, he worked at SCLA since October of 2011, worked the, uh, with the city and community services dating back to 2000, and uh, is noted as a hard and dedicated worker and will be missed by his city family. Uh, John was 64 years old, so if we could ha in, uh, have a moment of silence for him. Thank you. All right, at this time we'll move into our public comment section of the meeting, and I only have one card, Frank Atkins. Everyone, good evening. Um, I'd just like to say uh, good evening to everyone, and then um, I uh, had a chance to review the last public meeting's uh, videos, and uh, I want to uh, apologize to the council. I apparently went over the three minutes when I later reviewed it, so I uh, thank you for extending me the extra time, Ryan. I appreciate that. And uh, when I spoke on the year of my lot as 2011, uh, I meant 2001 is when I purchased it. So I just wanted to correct that. Um, and as far as tonight with the upcoming uh, thing with the um, this housing, um, I just wondered, I was looking at some paperwork, it said it's about $14 million. I guess the question I just was wondering is how much is involved in all this that's going on tonight? That's about my only question. I just was wondering. I was looking at some stuff and seeing properties listed and wondered does the city own it or what? And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, Frank, some of that uh, will be answered in our staff report as we get that uh, in here in a moment. All right, we'll move on to... Um, Anyone else wishing to address the council? Uh, I didn't see any. Oh, okay. Um, well, we'll still move forward, and uh, should he get here during the presentation, we do have a, enough of a council to, uh, to move forward on this. Um, under written communications, uh, agenda item number two, this is a request for the city of Victorville performing the housing functions of the former Victorville Redevelopment Agency. Uh, to adopt resolution number R-HF-12-001, approving the attached list of housing assets and author uh, authorized uh, staff to submit the list to the Department of Finance. Uh, Mr. Metzler. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. And you'll have to bear with me. I'm losing my voice, but I'm going to try to do my best. Um, as background, uh, and you're all familiar, uh, AB 26 uh, was the bill that effectively throughout the state of California um, caused for the uh, abolishment of redevelopment agencies. Uh, in our case, we actually uh, oversaw the Victorville Redevelopment Agency. And um, over the years, um, Victorville Redevelopment Agency has actually been in place since 1981, uh, conducted a number of redevelopment activities that included everything from redeveloping shopping centers to acquiring properties, to building infrastructure, to loaning money, uh, whether for commercial or residential purposes. And uh, resulting from that bill and resulting from the California uh, Supreme Court ruling uh, late last year, uh, as you know, uh, this entire year we've been focused heavily upon the wind down or the dissolution process, unfortunately. And as a part of that dissolution process, we've certainly learned that there's been a lot of ambiguity, a lot of uh, lack of clarity in how the bill was written, and of course it's been problematic for agencies and successor agencies statewide to actually administer the wind down of both the, the RDA's functions and its functions as a housing uh, entity. Um, so on June 27th this year, the uh, state of California uh, adopted AB 1484 uh, really is an attempt to try to help clarify some of those administrative issues um, as it related to the disposition of assets. We're meeting here today as the um, 
successor agency to the housing functions. And uh, there's two things that have been required in very short order since that bill be became effective July 1st. Um, one of the issues that you might have heard about, though it didn't affect Victorville, is redevelopment agencies, or I'm sorry, successor agencies statewide have been asked to true up the allocation of taxes received by it um, so that monies could be funneled back to the special districts. And basically what the state was attempting to do is identify monies received by the successor agency um, for the uh, last fiscal year and make sure that the amounts collected did not exceed the obligations that are on our EOPS or, or our op schedules. In Victorville's case, our obligations have exceeded substantially the amount of revenue actually collected. So we did not get a bill like a lot of other cities did throughout the state of California. The truing up effect was actually required to be done in very short order. In fact, I think they gave three or four days uh, to actually uh, complete payment or reimbursement uh, to the auditor controller's office once bills were received. We avoided that process uh, as it didn't impact uh, Victorville. But the second course of business resulting from that uh, AB 1484 being put in place is starting to develop the disposition procedures for assets. And in this case, as it relates to the housing, one of the call outs in the bill requires us to identify um, a housing asset list. And different from the housing asset list that you as a successor agency previously approved, um, AB 1484 actually goes on to more clearly define what is a housing asset. Typically what we included as housing assets were largely land or real estate uh, related assets. But the 1484 actually went into uh, including things such as um, receivables. And one of the uh, traditional courses of conduct uh, when operating as a redevelopment agency, the redevelopment agency did use a lot of its housing set aside monies for things like mortgage assistance loans, where we actually assisted first time home buyers to actually enjoy the pride of home, home, home ownership and actually buy homes in the city of Victorville. So certainly different in speaking to the, to the member of the public's uh, question and comment regarding the 14 million, a lot of the differentiation between what was previously approved as the 14 million and what is now almost 35 million is including all of those other items that have de been defined as assets that can in fact be used to be liquidated by the housing successor agency. And one of the things 1484 did was actually allowed and protected the affordable housing responsibility. So you in perpetuity can, can continue to provide the affordable housing responsibilities and this would be a financial resource for you to use uh, to provide those uh, affordable housing responsibilities in the future. So effectively what this item is doing, Sophie Escobar is here, she actually prepared the staff write-up and has a much greater detail as to the bill language and what this does and, and certainly capable of responding to what's in the, in the asset list. Um, but effectively what we're doing is we're identifying what the total valuation of assets are that over time going through the dissolution or the repayment process, these are monies that will actually come into the successor agency's coffers that then can be used uh, to further housing uh, responsibilities as set out in the California redevelopment law. Uh, so that's the very basic, uh, I'm running out of voice. I'll let Sophie maybe add to it if I missed anything, but that's generally uh, what you're being asked to approve is the, the valuation of the housing asset list for the um, housing element of the former RDA. So if, you, if you could come forward, um, I know Councilmember Kennedy just walked in so he didn't get that full briefing but uh, hopefully he's had some chance to look over some of this stuff. But I, just to be clear in, in understanding uh, this new bill that's been passed, it, is it my understanding that we're going to continue to see some sort of tax increment coming back for housing functions and we're supposed to continue to uh, operate in that role or exactly what it, how is that bill? How is that working? Yeah. It's not tax increment that will come back in for the housing functions. All of what was deemed tax increment before will be used to pay off the existing obligations that are listed on the ROPS that, uh, that the successor agency approves. Those could be obligated funds for housing or non-housing purposes. So all the new tax increment generated would go to pay off those previous debts. What this uh, 1484 allows and preserves is 
when certain loans of the housing funds are paid back from developers, for example, or from the first time home buyers, those loan proceeds can now go into a newly created fund of the city. Um, it's a new low mod housing asset fund. And those funds can be used for new housing activities within the city that the city has control over, not the redevelopment successor agency for old obligations. So it actually gives, as Keith mentioned, um, it preserves a future funding um, source for new activity. And, and how much, I mean, in your estimation, would that be? Because, I mean, at, at some point, will that run out since we don't have tax increment coming back in? And, well, and some of it will, will uh, run out, um, but it can be, but some of the, the, like, for example, the loan proceeds, we could take them in and then continue our mortgage assistance program and loan them back out so they could be um, used, um, like, in a cycle to continue to provide that assistance to our residents. Um, for the land assets, for example, they could be used for new housing um, as our contribution to a new housing development. So we could still put something back into affordable housing uh, as we have in the past, certain apartment complexes or things like that. Exactly. We have land to deal with. We have some loan proceeds that we can deal with. Um, those types of assets are, are ours to do future activities. How much do we have out there in loans receivable now that we're talking about working with? Okay, I'll walk you through it really quickly. Yeah, when we first presented to council back in February, we, we only listed what we knew as far as land assets because that's what was unclear in 26. And back then we thought it was about $14 million in land assets that the city would get to retain. With this new definition, it adds a lot more flexibility. It is one of the positive um, outcomes of 1484. Um, what you'll see on the first schedule is that we actually can retain, let me get to the real property. Is that that carrying value about of assets? 15, right, about $15 million in land. And then the Exhibit C is actually an, a current encumbrance on the, on the low mod funds that we have available. Normally under 26, all of the low mod cash balance is to eventually be sent back to the state. That was one of the provisions in 26. However, here in 24, you're allowed to account for encumbrances on current cash on hand. So this is a loan that is um, an obligation from the current cash on hand. It's $620,000. So it allows us to keep that cash to perform that obligation instead of sending it back to the state for the, for the other taxing entities. Um, Exhibit D are all of the, lo it's the loan portfolio of the single family mortgage assistance program loans. And they total about $2.2 million in loans outstanding. And then the Exhibit E captures all of the uh, developer loans for our multifamily projects. And although the dollar amounts were not, uh, this format was provided by the state, the dollar amounts for these loans were not um, asked for in the exhibit. I do know the total of these four loans is $5.1 million in residual, uh, residual um, receipt payments that we will receive over time from those properties. Now, all these small loans from, I guess they're homeowners? Correct. 30-year loans, four, five, six, eight thousand dollars is that correct? Correct. They're, they're for our mortgage assistance program. And if, if certain circumstances occur, like the uh, the property is refinanced or sold, or it's no longer the principal residence, well, then yeah. payoff is 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 uh, sooner. And then the last page is actually some additional loans from the housing fund that were used for non-housing purposes. For example, in 0910, the um, low mod fund of of the RDA was was used to um, pay the CRAF payment that the state had required. There is actually provisions in, in AB 1884 that allows future tax increment that comes in to be allowed to, subject to a, a payment schedule approved by our oversight board, um, allows these funds to then come back and be uh, paid back to the city as the housing entity and be able to use those funds. My understanding is the housing advocates um, wanted to be able to, to preserve the use of those, those loan repayments for future housing activities. So they really pushed for this provision. And we have $11 million, $11.5 million 
of funds out there that were loaned to the housing fund that upon repayment will eventually be able to be used by the city for, for new activities. So altogether, all of those total almost $35 million in assets that once this list is approved by the state, um, will then transfer as assets of the city acting in its capacity as the housing successor agency. Will we need a new entity? Will we need a new entity to do this or will it just become a department of the city? Right now we're, we're, I don't know if it's a separate legal entity that was never answered in 1484. In 1484 they clarified that the redevelopment successor agency is a completely new and separate legal entity. They, they clarify that in the new bill. What they did not clarify is whether or not your city acting as housing successor agency is a separate and legal entity. That's something that was missing um, and as a subject of, I guess, future cleanup. Um, right now we're treating it. We agendize the items separately and we, we distinguish it from your other city council, general city council functions. So I don't know about the legal entity status, but we are treating it as something else. And the bill requires a new and distinct fund where these um, assets and funds will go into. But we are the successor agency, right? Right, but the successor agency is in fact a separate entity and 1484 Absolutely, actually yeah. cleaned that up. Mm -hmm. But for housing, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Escobar is correct in the fact that uh, they, they didn't give us any further clarification with respect to that, so. But, but, the, but the funds is a, how I'm understanding it as well, is the funds are in fact kept, are kept separately. Separate. Does this, does this mean then that we, we remove this piece from the successor entity into the city? That that's, my, that's, that's my, my understanding, understanding, is that, it will, that these activities, the new activities, once these assets are transferred, uh, any new activities with this land or this cash that will be coming back to the city acting as housing successor agency will not be subject to oversight board review. And that's different from and separate from the regular redevelopment successor agency activities. So that oversight level um, seems, to, seems to indicate it's something different from and more just under the city's purview. Not completely clear, but. And there won't be a requirement to dispose of this expeditiously? Not so far, not yet. Not, not in these bills that I've read. Never know what's going to come down tomorrow. We're all flying a little bit blind. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's the state of California. What do you expect? <laughs> but if, if I might, um, there might be a time in the future. I mean, right now, what we are dealing with are non are non cash assets. There's going to be a point in time where you might want to try to monetize those assets, and unless they clarify the language in the bill with respect to the identity of the housing agency being a separate uh, legal entity of the city. I could foresee advising you and advising a future council that there's probably a responsible way since there's a finite value of, 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 uh, of these assets of developing some kind of business model uh, structured around it so that you have, you know, uh, a type of operation that can recycle the proceeds, whether it's through investment in land or creating a business opportunity through partnerships with, with private, so that you can create a business entity that's also in the business of trying to generate revenue as opposed to just spending it um, or gifting it away. So th there's probably a point in time when you start seeing the ability to, to monetize those things. If you're going to liquidate them in, in generating cash, you know, there might be an appropriate need to, to find a much more clear business responsibility for that organization. Right create some type of revol revolving fund programs. Mm -hmm. The only caveat is that the uh, money that does come in does have to be used for uh, affordable housing purposes. Yeah. But, but that's the way it was set up to begin with. All of, uh, uh, most of the, the majority of this money came in for the assets was federal funds anyway for housing, as I understand. What? Or redevelop, most of it was the redevelopment money for the housing, yeah. right, right. Uh, so if we, uh, we had, um, a definition at one time about what constituted a need for the low and modern housing, a, you know, a plateau. Where is that now in the marketplace with all this housing cut in half and everything else? How have they reevaluated some standard and said, you know, this qualifies because you have a need. You have it. 20% of our city is, uh, you know, 
at 50 percent values, how, how, do, how do they equate that to a need for low and moderate income housing like they did in the good old days when everything was booming along? I'm not sure that it has been reevaluated. Um, so we can make up any rules we want as a successor agency to how we administer as long as the, whoever is using it is what low income or this what? this particular these particular funds are are subject to the old community redevelopment laws. So the same rules that were on the books before we were dissolved as it relates to housing are the same guidelines that are in place for these new funds. So it's still the twenty percent. Uh, it's, so instead of the set aside that the housing advocates had lobbied so heavily for, there's this new revenue stream, right. which is from the old funds being re recirculated, that is, um, is for new housing activities and that follow the same guidelines in the community redevelopment law. So we're going to follow the same health and code section to use these funds, but we're not doing it as the redevelopment agency <clears throat> any longer. And I, I think maybe to try to answer Mike's question as I understand it. Um, California redevelopment law has an actual measure built into it defining how much housing you have to, to build or cause to be built. And it all depends on how much new housing is built in the former project area. That's kind of the triggering mechanisms that redevelopment agencies have always used to define what level of uh, housing production they have to provide. So. Right now, I think what, what you're talking about, as I understand it, is you know, based upon our current values, everything is affordable. But also one of the other measures that California redevelopment law speaks to is irrespective of that actual what is the median home price, they're speaking largely to the inclusionary housing count or how many deed restrictions do you have in place showing that you clearly have ownership of affordable housing um, uh, benefits. They don't use the RENA number as a criteria anymore? Two separate things. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank what you. are the risks <laughs> involved in adopting this resolution, if, if I can put it that way? I, you know, I don't really see any, any risk. Um, you know, this is a potential inflow of funds. It's a continued responsibility to, to provide this level of service um, as, as statutorily set. Um, I can tell you what the risks are if you don't do it and if, if you start ignoring the overall responsibilities that successor agencies have. One of the things that 1484 did was they got punitive. Um, they basically started identifying the successor agencies that if you don't comply, you don't start doing your EOPS, uh, you don't start making these reimbursement of funds on the true up process. They actually have clawback provisions in place where they can actually go after sales tax revenues. There might be another source that they can go after as well, but they started putting teeth into um, the whole process. So non-compliance is becoming a much more difficult option. All right. Well, I'll entertain a motion on uh, resolution number R-HF-12-001. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries with Council Member Vias absent. All right, and that is the only item on our agenda for this evening. So with that, we are.